Okay, so I'm here today with uh, Karen Phillips, and I'm going to try to do this the right way, by the way. Okay. Karen Phillips is the Assistant Dean of Graduate Programs yes. at the Questrom School of Business at Boston University. You got it. Did I muck any of that up? No. Okay, good, good. And we're actually on the BU campus today overlooking Boston, and you might be able to see the sicko sign over Karen's right shoulder. Um, Karen and I have got to know each other a little bit over the last couple months. She's been great. She's been introducing me to some programs that BU does for graduate students. And I'm fortunate enough in, in the fall semester, I'm going to come by and speak to some students. So Karen and I have been talking on and off recently about leadership and development of young adults and students. And, you know, we've been brainstorming a little bit today. So I thought I would pop the recorder on and share um, some of the dialogue that we've been having around development and leadership for young adults. And, to tee it up, um, why don't you just take uh, even half a minute and tell, even though I just gave your title, um, tell the folks out there, and thank you by the way for joining um, my Teaching to Lead videos, tell the folks a little bit about like, what you do, what's your role here sure. with the school and the, in the classroom school. Sure, so I oversee the academic advising piece, the career advising piece, registration, um, student clubs and organizations. Pretty much anything that affects graduate students in the student-facing world, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, and we have MBA students, we have part-time and an evening professional MBA students, we have Masters of Management Studies students, we have Masters of Mathematical Finance students, and we also have PhD students. So it's a big portfolio of different types of programs. Um, some are two-year, some are one-year, some are one-and-a-half years, so it kind of depends on which population we're talking about, but I deal with all realms of anything that might be touching their experience, whether it's events or their registration, their class schedule, getting their resume done, um, interacting with companies on campus, um, meeting up with alumni, um, a lot of ums. And I'm sorry. learning to cut those out. I know. Trust me. Um, and basically, I'm sort of the person that's in between them and the faculty. I work on curriculum development for those programs as well with all aspects of the program. Okay, well first off, just the description of your your job and your role is, is enough to make my head spin. So um, I give you credit for remembering all that you do. <laughs> um, it sounds like a lot, and the school is very impressive, and I, and I look forward to being around here um, some this fall and getting to know some of the students, and the, you know, BU uh, in its name alone carries a, a, a lot of weight in, in Boston. So, so let's get into a couple things uh, for a couple minutes here. So what do you think, in, in all that you get to see and work with students on, what, um, what are some of the challenges? Um, we'll start with some of the, you know, the more friction type topics, and then we'll get into some of the more glossy, um, nice ones. But what, what's like a challenge in today's connection economy? You know, you're in the academic world, but you know you're, you're in, this is a graduate school, the School of Business and your grad programs and that you work with. So, what are some of the challenges that you work on and try to help students with as they get ready to enter you know, the workforce and, and the real world? That's a good question. Well, I should say that not the post-academic world. <laughs> yes, the real world. Um, I think that a lot of students are very focused on checking boxes and getting their tasks done and making sure their assignments in. Um, there's not as much focus on the soft skills and the self-awareness mm -hmm. and understanding the leadership skills that they need to survive in the post-academic world. Um, so I would say that's one of the challenges, is sort of weaving that into our events and curriculum and networking and helping them understand that because it is a connection economy, they need to be able to like have that small talk and um, ask someone about themselves and not just sell themselves and ask for jobs immediately. They need right. to get to know someone. Um, I also think global awareness is really important. Um, we have a very international student base here, and I think students initially say that they're very interested in that, but some of the feedback that we see is that there's this surface level interest, and there's really not necessarily a deep understanding or willingness from folks from different cultures to get to know one another and sort of take that time to acculturate. Right. Um, so I think understanding the global economy and global workforce is something that we're trying to be more intentional about here. Excellent. That's a long answer. So. Yeah, but good. And you threw in some nuggets about leadership, which I which I love. So, you know, one of the things that I think about and say is, um, even when I tell family and friends about what I'm doing, you know, with teaching to lead, is that the world today and age is out the window for this and where you are. I think for anybody, like it's it's not about waiting to get picked anymore or interviews. I mean, interviews are part of the process, but 
we have to go out and we have to create our place in this economy, in this world now, and like by doing videos and sharing more about who we are. So I, I know that grads, students today are very in touch with you know technology, Absolutely. of course. But do you see that where like are they grasping that concept where they have to where they know they have they have to create? It's no longer you're not graduating and getting hired to be one of a hundred thousand at an IBM or a big industrial company. You have to go out and forge your place. Like, do you see them? Do they have that mindset, and are they working towards that? Absolutely. Well, I see both sides of it. So there are definitely students who are very attracted to the big names. You know, Amazon, Google. They really want to work for these big entrepreneurial companies, but the roles might not be as entrepreneurial as they think or hope. Um, and then we definitely have students who want to create their own startup and have their own ideas about, you know, how they're going to solve a problem. I think a lot of students this day and age are, have this social responsibility piece where they feel like they need to um, you know, solve, solve some world problem yeah. or maybe not a world problem, but some problem that they see that they feel like they can address. Um, and so giving them the skills to create a business model and figure out how to even start that process. Um, we, we have something at BU called the Buzz Lab, which is sort of an incubator for startups um, where they can go and get industrial support and sort of opinions and ideas about products or um, you know some type of company they're trying to start and so that sort of that's an all BU initiative not just Western School of Business um, but I definitely think there are definitely students that are trying to create their own way and then there are those that want this you know very glamorous path mm -hmm. and there are a lot